Jane, how are you? I'm fine, and you, thank you for, for inviting good. us to speak. <laughs> it is good to have you with us. Uh, you're going to be talking about used vehicles in Africa. Yes, I will. Go for it. Okay, so I can start. Thank you. Yes, you're more than welcome to. Yes. So I will be speaking on the issue of used vehicles in Africa. Um, next slide, please. Yes, um, this week, actually, uh, two reports uh, on used vehicles were launched in Africa. Uh, global used vehicles were launched, one by UNEP and the other by the Netherlands, the government of Netherlands. Uh, the UNEP report uh, looked at um, used vehicle flows from the three largest markets, that is Europe, Japan, and uh, the US between 2015 and 2018 and 14 million vehicles were actually um, exported by these three markets during that period. And 70% um, of these vehicles are, uh, went to developing countries. 40% of these, the largest share, was imported in Africa. So I will be presenting uh, this, uh, um, these findings, as well as we also looked at the regulatory environment in 146 countries. So I will concentrate uh, on Africa, what are the regulations in importing countries? Uh, the Netherlands report, which I'll also talk about, actually collaborates the UNEP report. They looked at the exports of vehicles from the Netherlands in 2017 to 2018. And last year in December, they did physical tests. They went to the port and uh, looked at vehicles being exported um, into Africa. What is the quality of those vehicles? So I will also talk a bit about that. So what we see is that uh, most of the African countries, only four countries in Africa, do not allow import of used vehicles. So the rest of the African countries, 54, uh, the 50 out of the 54, allow import of used vehicles. And the bulk of uh, new vehicle registrations are actually used. You can see in uh, Nigeria, about 94% of uh, uh, vehicle registrations are actually used. 95% in Kenya, 97% in Malawi. So the bulk of vehicle registrations are actually used. Next slide, please. So uh, what are the regulatory framework or, or environments in the importing countries in Africa? The 50 that I talked about, because we didn't look at the four that have banned imports of used vehicles. And this is for light duty vehicles. So the, the, the normal passenger cars that we use. So what we found is that um, from the 50 countries that uh, we looked at, only two have a minimum of Euro 4 vehicle emission standards. Uh, for us, uh, UNEP and partners, they agreed uh, Euro 4 minimum vehicle emission standards is, you know, like the, the target for countries because this is where we start seeing the health benefits. Uh, so only two countries in Africa, Morocco and Rwanda, are implementing Euro 4 equivalent uh, vehicle emission standards. Uh, 46 countries in Africa do not have any uh, Euro-based emission standards actually in place. And the graph on your left uh, shows, you know, what kind of the vehicles do we have in Africa? And uh, this is um, a study that was done in Accra uh, in 2013. Uh, and these are the kind of vehicles that are found in Accra. Again, it's the kind of vehicles that are found in Sheffield uh, in the UK. Most of the vehicles in Accra you can see are Euro 1, and a bit of Euro 2, and most of the vehicles in Sheffield were actually Euro 4 and 5. Next slide, please. Uh, a lot of the African countries, 20 uh, out of the 50, prefer um, an age-based regulation. And again, this is not adequate because from this uh, 20, uh, nine have five years and below. And uh, some of the countries like DR Congo, they allow import of up to 20 years. So their age limit is 20 years. Um, so and 30 countries do not have any age restriction. So that is actually a recipe for the import of very old polluting cars. So 30 countries have no age-based uh, regulation. Uh, 46 have no Euro uh, emission standards. And the example there of Uganda shows, you know, uh, gives you the picture that over the years, they have actually been importing very old vehicles. Next slide, please. Uh, so what is the regulatory regime? So we looked at uh, vehicle emission standards 
And we also looked at uh, age-based to come up with a, you know, a weak, not weak, a good regulatory system. And you can see Africa, you know, I just wanted to give this a global picture. You can see in Africa, the red and the orange, uh, th that's weak and very weak uh, regulatory uh, regimes to on, on, on used vehicles. If we zero in on Africa, the next slide, please. You can see that 35 countries were actually ranked as having very weak regulatory regimes. Uh, this means that um, 35, if you add the five which have weak, do not have good regulatory regimes to incentivize, uh, uh, to look at the kind of vehicles being imported uh, into their regions. If you can just stick to that slide a little bit, I will talk more about the findings that we found from the, you know, the collaboration from the uh, Netherlands uh, findings. So the Netherlands, I, I spoke about, they looked at... Uh, export of their vehicles from 2017-2018 uh, through their ports and they also did physical as uh, checks uh, for for europe most of the vehicles are actually exported to west africa and to north africa so they looked at 160 vehicles physical checks to look at the quality and from these 160 vehicles they found that a fifth do not you know a fifth of these vehicles were actually wrecks they could not even inspect them. And some of these, they do not even allow to be uh, exported. Nine of those vehicles did not have any emission control technologies. These were cut off from the vehicles. Eight of these vehicles had missing or faulty airbags. Uh, the average age of the vehicles was 18.2. And the bulk of them were actually below Euro 4 and did not even have a, a roadworthy certificate. I think that's why they were being exported. Uh, the majority of which were over 200,000 uh, kilometers, uh, the, the mileage. Um, and actually some of the trucks like uh, that were looked at, uh, tested, they had uh, 750,000 kilometers, the mileage. Um, only Morocco, uh, you know, from the Western and, and North Africa, only Morocco had uh, good vehicles, uh, cleaner vehicles being exported there because Morocco has a five year age limit and Euro 4 vehicle emission standard. And what the study found was that actually a majority of the vehicles being exported to Morocco are Euro 5. Uh, next slide, please. There is some good uh, uh, progress though, which I wanted to point out. Um, last month, uh, through, over the years and uh, culminating in Jan in February this year, uh, the West Africa has been looking at how to harmonize uh, clean fuels and vehicle, at least Euro 4 uh, equivalent vehicle emission standards. And uh, last month, the ECOWAS, 15 countries in West Africa met and uh, adopted Euro 4 equivalent uh, vehicle emission standards starting from 1st of January next year and matching uh, fuel quality. So um, we expect to see some good progress, you know, some kind of regulation within uh, that region. Uh, enforcement compliance is something that, you know, uh, needs to be continued support. We know that East Africa is already drafting uh, similar standards, Euro 4 equivalent vehicle emission standards, but they have not uh, yet been submitted for discussion. Um, the two regions for, for us that we need to continue dialogue and collaboration would be the SADAC, the Southern Africa subregion, and the Central Africa subregion. Because North Africa, a lot of those countries either have burnt or have good uh, vehicle um, age limits. And uh, next slide, uh, which is, I think, the last slide. Uh, so what we find is that um, countries that have incentivized or have incentives and regulations uh, on, on, on vehicles have been able to attract uh, cleaner vehicles like Mauritius. Uh, I also spoke about Morocco. So Mauritius has a three-year three year age limit and it also has policies that incentivize uh, cleaner vehicles as, as well as electric vehicles and you can see the growth uh, of, of this. So in conclusion, what I would say is that there is definitely a need for regulation to look at the quality of used vehicles coming into the region. This is more urgent now that um, uh, Europe is going to uh, uh, enforce a strict, especially diesel uh, vehicle regulation that we do not end up exporting or Africa does not end up importing uh, pollution 
uh, into the subregion. And there's need to look at vehicle emissions in a harmonized way, uh, because this is actually beneficial. You know, there's a lot of studies that have been done uh, showing that uh, air pollution, uh, transport being a, a major component of it, uh, is worsening in many of the African countries. So it, it has health implications, it has cost implications, safety implications, as you saw, and uh, some of the vehicles being shift, sh shipped into the region do not have uh, uh, airbags or have faulty airbags. Uh, the braking system is not working. So there's really need to uh, look at the regulation and uh, incentivize the import of cleaner vehicles. Thank you. I have one quick question before we get there. Um, that's the exact same question I had from Samson. Are the regulatory uh, frameworks in Europe to uh, scrap used vehicles which are not environmentally friendly, rather allowing them to land than rather than allowing them to land in South Africa or Africa? Yes, yes. A lot of the what we found, like in the Netherlands, they have an end of life uh, 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 regulation that you know. Uh, people actually are uh, supposed to, because some of the vehicles being shipped into Africa were wrecks, they were supposed to be recycled, but they do not do that. And uh, I think this is also similar to Japan, where they have um, some, some regulation on, you know, after a certain, your vehicle has reached a certain age and certain emissions, you, you know, you need to, to take them into recycling, but that doesn't happen because they are going to cost more. They are going to get the exporter more money by just shipping them into Africa. So there's need for regulation in Africa. What regulations do we have within Africa once vehicles are, say, here already, there's not much we can do about it. What are our regulations around recycling old vehicles or what is the processes that we have? Very few countries have such regulations on recycling, you know, and that's why one of the things that we're trying to do, uh, UNEP partners, is to look at the, because motorization, one, one fact is, is this, motorization in Africa is still quite low. If you look at, uh, let's say, a country like uh, uh, Ethiopia, uh, it only has like seven, seven vehicles per thousand people uh, against, uh, you know, countries like Europe, which have over 500 the yeah. U.S. of 800. So motorization is still low. So we still have a chance to look at the kind of vehicles coming into the into the region. So we are looking at how do we stop and ensure that cleaner vehicles come in. And whatever is in the system, we are already looking at ways of having inspection, maintenance, regular testing to ensure that uh, the vehicles stay as clean as possible. Perfect. Jane, thank you so much for chatting to us. It's been a very enlightening uh, talk and I really enjoyed it.